All right, welcome to tutorial eight. Uh, we're going to talk about graphic file types and cloning. So that's the topic for now. So what we're going to do, first we're going to do this. We're going to go file new. And we're going to just start a new graphic with a width of 800 and a height of, well, let's just go 400. And I'm going to go with a transparent background. you got to go transparent on your background. Resolution 72 RGB color. Press OK. So here we go. Now I want you to grab your type tool. Grab your type tool and pick a color for your text. Whatever color you want is fine. And pick a font. Whatever font style you want is, is fine. And let's go to the highest size, size 72. And I want you to click. I'm going to click center too here. I want you to click and I want you to type web design. Okay, so you get something that looks like this. Now I'm just going to go control T. I'm going to hold shift, make that a little bigger. So I can see it a little bit better. Let's take and crop that. So I'm going to go grab my crop tool. I want an unconstrained crop. So I'm going to click unconstrained. And I'm going to go ahead then and I'm going to drag these settings around. Up and down and around. So it looks something like this. Double click it. And just set those crop settings. Now, let's add some effects to it. So I'm going to go down to my layer effects. And I'm going to go and I'm going to bevel this. Let's give it a little bit of a bevel. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to add a stroke. So I'm going to click on effects. Stroke. And let's put a stroke around the outside of it. Press OK. Let's go to Layer Effects. Let's do a drop shadow. Change that blend mode. I'm going to change that to normal so that I can see my drop shadow. And I can distance that out a little bit. Spread it out a little bit. And uh, let's size it out a little bit. Change the angle. Go ahead and get it. To whatever setting you want. I'm going to press OK. <clears throat> and here is that graphic okay, that we just designed. I don't care what you guys create. It doesn't have to be just like mine. This is just for demonstration purposes. So now we have an image. So if I go File and I go Save As, it's going to save this image as a .psd, a Photoshop graphic file type. Now this is good, a Photoshop graphic file type has layers. It allows me to create complex graphics with multiple layers. The downfall is now I need to change this to something else to be able to insert it into a Word document, a web page, a PowerPoint presentation, whatever I want to use it for, I've got to change this file type. So PSD is good when I'm designing, design mode, and I'm going to save that and show you this. So I'm going to go into documents. I'll go to that web one folder. I'm going to go to graphics and I'm just going to save this as name dot PSD. Okay. So this is a dot PSD. I press save. There it is. I press okay. The name changes up top says I've saved it. It's a dot PSD. Now the beauty of Photoshop is I can take and make multiple copies of this image as different types of graphics to be used in different ways. Um, sometimes one type is more, makes more sense than another. But the easy way to export a graphic based off this, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna, all those layers will get compressed into one layer. And when, when you decide to take it into a different graphic file type that's not a .psd. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna go File, Save for Web, File, save for web. And you'll see now it'll ask you, okay, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a GIF? 
Do you want to do a JPEG? Do you want to do a PNG? These numbers are basically your quality settings on your GIF. Okay, the higher the number, the higher the quality, the more size it's going to be though too. Same with JPEGs, same with PNGs. PNGs take up a lot more size than JPEGs or GIFs. But let's do a GIF. 128 dithered. So it's going to kind of round the edges. Um, you can look at it. You can see what happens. But I can do this as a GIF if I want to. I rarely ever use GIFs. But I'm going to press save. And now I'm saving this as a GIF into my documents that web design one folder, that graphics folder, okay? So it's name.gif, right? I don't have any other GIFs in here, so I can't see anything else. So I'm gonna save it as a GIF. Now, the original stays the same. When I go file save for web, I'm just exporting that as a GIF out to somewhere else. You know, essentially making a copy as a GIF. So I can do this with the other types, save for web, I'm going to go to that preset JPEG high, click on it. I can see the preview. I go ahead and press save. Okay, now you can see there's that me graphic in there. I do have a JPEG in here, but I'm going to save this as a JPEG. Just, and I'm going to give it the same name, name, save. Okay, the original saves the same. I created a copy as a JPEG in that folder. File save for web. I'm going to go to a PNG 24, which is becoming kind of the standard in my opinion. Good quality. It's got all the, all the properties you need. I'm going to press save, name, but it's going to be a .png. So I don't have any PNGs in here, so it looks like it's blank, but there really is other things in here. Um, so I'm going to save this as a name.png. Okay, so now if I go back to that folder and I go to my documents and I go into that web one graphics folder, you'll see the different name graphics. This one is a Adobe Photoshop image. This one is a PNG. This one is a JPEG. This one is a GIF. Okay. So all these three were created off of this base template, this base design. Now, I've, I've exported these for use in other programs because I cannot put this into another program. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go ahead and just close this. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go open up PowerPoint. Here's PowerPoint. I'm going to do a blank presentation. And I need... I'm going, to, I'm going to change my layout to blank, and I need a, a colored background to demonstrate this. So I'm going to click Design up top. I'm going to click on this Format Background. Right here it says Solid Fill, and I'm going to change my fill color to like a blue. Uh, let's do like a, I don't know, yeah, not quite that dark. So like a sky blue. Okay, so I hope you guys can see that. Change my screen here. There, I think you should be able to see it better now. Just change that to that blue color. Okay, so now I want to put those images in here. So I'm going to click on Insert. It's not an online picture. It's a picture on my computer. So I'm going to click Pictures. And then I'm going to go to my Documents. Go to that Web Design 1 folder that we made start of the year I'm going to click on graphics and I'm going to click on let's go to the well you'll even see the PSD is not available to be put in if I go and change this from all pictures to all files now you'll see the PSDs if I try to put in this PSD it's going to go uh, no you can't do that we don't accept that Okay, so that's not going to work. So your PSDs are used to design. Okay, now once you've designed something, you can export it as a GIF. So if I insert this GIF, this GIF works. If I insert pictures and I insert 
the JPEG, the JPEG works. If I insert and insert pictures and I insert the PNG, the PNG works. Now you see some major differences here. Okay, you can see the GIF, it doesn't have the quality, it doesn't have the 16.7 million color possibilities and combinations. So when you get some more advanced type shading and things, it kind of has problems. JPEG's biggest downfall, it can't be transparent. So it's going to put in, you know, if you try to do a transparent JPEG, it's going to put in this white background, this rectangle in the background. The PNG, it great right i mean it does perfect it gets everything it's got the quality it's transparent what's the downfall of it you know there is no visible one the only downfall is a png takes about twice as much space as these two meaning it's going to take longer to load on a web page it's going to take up more room on your computer now web pages are loading so fast computers have so much storage now that it's rarely a problem anymore so you know i i use PNGs almost all the time but it's up to you you know if you're if you had a background that was white you know so if we went back to design and format background and let's say my background was just white you know e any of these would be fine because it blends into the background the JPEG is fine even though it has that square it still blends in and the PNG still works but once you start getting colors in the background, now you have a little more difficulty. So you have to be able to understand that this right here, a PSD cannot be inserted. Okay, it cannot be inserted. You have got to create a different graphic file type to be able to insert into publications, Word, um, PowerPoint, web pages. If you want to use your graphics for something else, you got to at some point go, okay, I've designed this. Now what do I want it to be? File, save for web. What do I want to export it as so I can use it in whatever it is that I'm working with? Because otherwise you'd just be frustrated because you're like, why can't I insert these? Well, you can't insert PSDs. PSDs are the designing multiple layers creativity portion of graphic design you need to compress it into a graphic file type that's accepted by these programs so you can use it now the second component of this lecture is talking about cloning so i'm going to go over cloning um, it's a good tool at times um, it can be used to make selections it can be used to fix images it's it's kind of a nice thing to know so I'm going to go file open and I'm going to go on to this PC documents and I'm going to go to not documents this PC I want to go to DHS shared here and I'm going to go to business ed and I'm going to go to graphics I'm going to go down to that unit 8 folder and I'm going to open up geese okay so here's this picture of these geese Now, I'm going to take and I'm going to clone these geese. We're going to add more geese to this flock. Okay, so when we clone something, we make a copy of it. To clone something, I'm going to go down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, to a tool called the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to select that clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool is just like a brush. Okay, your brush settings are the same everything's the same you got to kind of figure out okay what kind of brush size do I want to use here you don't really want a hard edge when you clone because it can kind of mess up your clone it it'll, it won't enable your your image to blend into the background as good but I'm gonna set my brush here you know I'm looking at this is gonna, these guys are gonna be tough I'm gonna change this to like 20 so I can clone this. Okay, so when I do this, 20 with a hardness of zero. That's my brush size. When I clone, I first have got to pick the point I'm going to clone from. So if I'm going to clone this goose right here, I'm going to hold Alt. You'll see your cursor change to a crosshairs. I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm going to left-click once 
to set the point. Okay, that's my point of cloning. So now, when I decide to clone that image, I'm going to go where I want to place the next goose, and I am painting from that spot. And I can see a crosshairs on my goose. So I need to kind of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trace the outline of my goose. I'm staring at the left goose, tracing the outline of that goose. Like so. And then when I get done, I'm just going to come back. Oops. Control Alt Z here. All right. So I've got with my clone stamp, I don't want to do that. I, I got to click and check this aligned because I don't want to clone that goose over again. So that I goofed up on that. Now it's aligned. But before, I was going back to the original point because I didn't have this align thing checked. So I'm going to go to Control-Z. Let's start over on this. Okay, so from the beginning, this is probably good anyways. First thing we got to do is do what? Got to hold Alt, get the crosshairs, set our point. Okay, now I have a line checked, so we should be in better shape. So I'm going to click. I am going to trace that goose. Like so. And once I get around him, now because I have a line checked, I can color the goose in. I won't start a new goose. If I don't have a line checked, then I start from my original point, which then I'll start from the goose's head again, which I didn't want to do. Okay, so all I'm doing when I'm cloning is I am copying pixels from one spot to another. That's all I'm doing. It's almost the same as making a selection. If I selected this guy, moved him, copy pasted him, it's kind of the same thing. Okay, he becomes now still part of this background layer. Now, sometimes when you clone, you're going to want to add a new layer. And if I want to clone another goose, okay, I might want to clone from this layer, this background layer, to this layer one. So if I was going to clone this goose down here, I'd hold Alt, set my point. I like to set the point on the head of the, the critter that I'm cloning. And now I'm going to go clone him up here. I'm staring at my cursors on the original goose. I'm tracing the outline of that goose. You know, and I can touch this up and make this better once I get back around him. Now once I get around, I usually go back up and go, all right, now I can color him in. But because I put this goose on his own layer, that actually looked pretty good. That goose I put on, oh, I didn't do that. I didn't move to the second layer. God darn, I'm screwing up. All right, let's try this again. So Alt set my point. Boom. Now, I'm going to clone him onto layer one. That's what I meant to do at the start. So I'm going to go to layer one. I'm going to click, and I'm going to trace the outline of this goose, and then I'm going to color him in, and I've put him onto a different layer, this layer one. So I can actually take and grab my move tool, and I can move this guy around because he's on his own layer. So I can clone and move him to a different place. You know? So cloning can be something that's another way to select, really, and kind of a, a good way to select if you have a lot of colors in an image and you're having trouble figuring out a way, a good way to select an object, well, you could clone the object. You know, And it doesn't, you, you got to be careful, but... It can do some good things. Now, another method of cloning, I'm going to close this, say no to save changes. File, open. I'm going to open up this sailboat. Sometimes you may have an image where, okay, this image right here, they're giving us this example. I'm going to grab this and click fit screen so you can see it better. But there's some scratches up here. There's a bird up here. You know, maybe you like this image, but 
you don't like the bird, you don't like the airplane, you don't like what something in the background's not good, you want to get rid of it, you'd like to change it. So another tool we can use is what's called the healing brush. Okay, and if you click on this tool, you'll see that it's the second option down. This is called the healing brush. This is like cloning. Click the healing brush. You can set the brush size just like you did the clone brush. And it works a lot the same as the clone brush. You're going to hold Alt and set a point on a good, clean, healed spot. So I'm going to set my point right here on that. And now I can paint using that spot as a reference. When I let go, it will actually take and fix those parts that I need to fix. I'm just clicking and dragging over those parts. It keeps going back to that original spot and saying, okay, we're going to make it look more like that original spot. And you can get rid of those scratches. And you can make that look a lot better. I mean, and you could even get rid of this bird. Let's say I held Alt, click here at about the same level of sky. I said, all right, get rid of this bird. Don't want him. I cloned it. Bird's gone. Okay? The image is the way that you want it. You cleaned up the sky. You cleaned out something that you didn't want in it. You know, whether it's a lone bird or it's something that you really like this picture, but you wanted something out of the background, you can heal it right out of there. You know, you got a blemish on your skin. You could take some good skin and go over that blemish and heal your skin. That's where I think it gets the name from. So you can really uh, powder it up and make make yourself look better on a picture too by by healing any uh, imperfections you might have. So, all right, that concludes the tu tutorial number eight. We talked about graphic file types. We talked about the clone stamp and the clone brush. So thank you.